Hi, now you should already be familiar with the product rule for differentiation. That is that if you've got y equals the product of two functions of x, let's say u and v, then dy by dx is given by this result here. Now it could be that we need to find higher differentials like d2y by dx squared, d cubed y by dx cubed, d4y by dx to the 4, and so on. So is there a quick method, a formula if you like, for finding dny by dx to the n? Well the answer is yes there is, and it's called Leibniz theorem. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's start then by finding d2y by dx squared. What would we need to do? Well, we would need to differentiate dy by dx with respect to x. And we already know what dy by dx is. It's this result here. So we would need to differentiate this with respect to x. And what we're going to need to do is use the product rule again. When it comes to using the product rule, the formula here, I like to think of it as the product of two parts, the first part and the second part. So we take the first part, times it by the differential of the second part, and then we plus the second part and times it by the differential of the first part. So if we look at differentiating with respect to x, these two terms here in the bracket, we'll take the first term here. We've got a product. So by the method I've just described, I'm going to take the first part, the u, and I'm going to times it by the differential of the second part. So we differentiate dv by dx with respect to x, and we get d2v by dx squared. OK, then I'm going to have to add and I take the second part dv by dx and I multiply it by the differential of the first part. So differentiate u with respect to x and you're going to get du by dx. OK, so I've used the product rule then to differentiate this first term. Now we move on to the second term here and applying the same principle product rule again, I'm going to take the first part, v, times it with the differential of the second part. So that's going to be d2u by dx squared. And then we plus and we take the second part, du by dx, and we now multiply it by the differential of the first part, the v. Differentiate that with respect to x and you've got dv by dx. Okay? Now, what I need to do is just group up my terms, simplify this. And when I do that, this is the result that I get. You can see we've got u d squared v by dx squared here. You'll notice we've got two lots of du dx dv dx, one here and one here. And then we've just got the one lot of v d squared u by dx squared. You'll notice I've change this round though. You'll see why later. Okay, so that's th that result, okay? Took a little bit of work to get that. So what happens then if we were looking to find d cubed y by dx cubed? What's that result going to be? Well, we're going to need to differentiate with respect to x d2y by dx squared. And we've just seen that that was this result here. So we're going to need to differentiate all of this, okay, with respect to x. Now, what I'm going to need to do is to look at differentiating each of these terms individually. And it's going to be quite a lot of work. We're going to need to use the product rule on each one of these. Well, to save time, I've actually written the result out for you. And you can see it's quite a lot. Just very briefly, OK, doing the product rule on this term here, it's the first part times the differential of the second part here with respect to x. That gives me this term here. 
Then I take the second part, d2v dx squared, times it with the du by dx. Okay, differential of the first part there. When it comes to this term, I've pulled out the two in the front here and differentiating du dx dv dx with respect to x, take the first part, du dx, times it by a differential of the second part with respect to x, giving me d2v by dx squared. Then we take the second part, dv dx, and multiply it by the differential of du dx, the first part with respect to x, giving me d2u dx squared. OK, and then we've got the last term here and we take the first part, d2u by dx squared, times it by differential of the second part, the v giving me dv dx, and then plus the second part, the v, times the differential with respect to x of the first part here. That's going to give me d cubed u by dx cubed. OK, so quite a lot to do there. Now if you simplify this, expand out the bracket and simplify it, the result that you get is this one here. You can check it out in your own time, okay? Now when we start to look at the results that we've got for d2y by dx squared and d cubed y by dx cubed, a pattern starts to emerge. You'll notice we've got u here. Then it goes du dx, and then it goes d2u by dx squared. When it comes to this one, we go u, du by dx, d squared u by dx squared, and d cubed u by dx cubed. It goes up by 1, if you like, each time. Whereas when we look at the second part here, the d squared v by dx squared, it's got the same degree as the differential here. And then it starts to go down by 1. We go dv by dx in the next one. And then we just leave it as v. And in this one, notice how we've got d cubed v by dx cubed. The degree here is the same as what we were differentiating with here. And then it steps down by 1 in the next part here, d2v by dx squared. And it goes down again, dv by dx. And in the last term here, you'll see it's just v. And then we've got these numbers in front of our terms. What we've got here, if you like, is a 1. And what we've got here then is a 2. And we've got another one here. Does this start to look familiar, I wonder? In this example here, we've got a 1, we've got the 3, we've got another 3, and we've got a 1. Do you recognise this? Well, these numbers appear in Pascal's triangle. Remember, to get this pattern, we just have a series of 1s down the side of the triangle here. And to get this 2, for instance, we add these two ones together to give us the 2. And then we do the 1 plus the 2 to give us the 3, the 2 plus the 1 here to give us this 3. So we could continue this pattern on by following that method. We use Pascal's triangle when it came to working with the binomial expansion. And this behaves very similarly to the binomial expansion. You can see that when it came to the second differential here, we ended up with the coefficients of each of these terms as being the 1, the 2 and the 1. And when we looked at the third differential here, dq, y, dx, q, we ended up with 1, 3, 3, 1, the values that we had here. So this leads us to follow on with what would d4y be dx to the 4 be? Now, at this stage, you might want to just pause the video and write down what you think the result would be. So I'll just give you a few moments to do that, and then I'll come back and we'll run through the result. OK, so how did you get on? Well, if I was looking at that result, what I would put down is that pattern first of all. I'd start with the u here, then it will go to du dx, d2u dx squared, d cubed u by dx cubed, all the way up to 
d4u by dx to the 4, the degree that we've got here. And at the same time, start with dv to the 4, dx to the 4, and start reducing that by 1 in each of the following terms until we get down to v here. What we need to do though is just put the coefficients in here of each of these terms. And we can do that from Pascal's triangle then. Because we know that we must have a 1 here, we add these two values together, 1 and 3 giving us the 4, 3 and 3 giving us the 6, 3 and the 1 giving us a 4, and then we just put the 1 on the end. Okay, so that means that we should have a 1 here, in here we should have the 4, and then the 6, and then the 4, and then back to the 1. Of course, you don't need to write the 1s in here. It's up to you, okay? But you definitely need the 4, the 6, and the 4 there. So I hope that's given you an idea now on how we can use Leibniz theorem then to get a quick formula for working out the nth differential, if you like, of dy by dx. Now in the next video, what I'll be doing is just recapping very quickly on this theorem and we'll start to do a few examples. So I hope you'll carry on and look at that video and any more videos in this series. So thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe by the way. It does help to keep you informed of any updates that uh, come through. Okay?